everybody. Annette Green here. Got me a little Valentine mailbox going here. I want to teach you how to make it. Super simple. Uh, but the point of this video this time is not only to show you a cute project like this uh, using wonderful Graphic 45 paper, I will also show you a variation of it with different paper. But the point of this video is to show you how easy it is to use your cutting machine. And I'm talking Cricut, Silhouette, whatever. I use a Cricut. A lot of times when I'm teaching classes, I have people say, you know, something about what I did. And I say, oh, I'll use my Cricut. And they're like, oh, I sold mine. I got rid of it. Or I don't know how to use it. And I feel so bad for those people because it's such a wonderful machine. It's, it's Any cutting machine is, is a great tool. And this whole thing was cut on the Cricut. A simple SVG file from one of my favorite shops, LoriWhitlock.com. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. This is um, one of my favorite places to buy SVG files for my Cricut. It's LoriWhitlock.com. And when you go there, this is how easy it is. You hit the Shop tab. And, you know, this is not to promote Lori Whitlock shop or anything, but this is, like I said, one of my favorites. So just to kind of show you very quickly, you can scroll through and the newest, more seasonal things are first, but you can also go through here and search all kinds of categories. You can type something specific up here in the search bar. And there's a little freebie that I'm gonna add to my order at the end here. Uh, so, Let's, I can't demonstrate the actual Valentine mailbox because I've already purchased that file here. So I'm gonna just show you how easy it is to purchase anything. So I saw something a little earlier that I like and see if I can find it. Umbrella drink. That's a real cute one, right? So there it is and all I have to do you see this license over here I'm just gonna make like one card with this I'm not gonna use it for classes or anything so the personal license is free and comes with the file if I were to pick something else it would cost additional money uh, and I've done this plenty of times in classes that I've taught usually this one here because my classes typically don't seem to be more than 40 or so people so that is $8 plus the $1.49 or whatever the price is. So I would add that to cart. And as you can see, I have other things in here. So it's like $15 and change. And then you can proceed to check out if you want to use your card, but I'm going to go with PayPal. And I'll, I won't bore you with, you know, all this stuff with PayPal, but I will show you what happens after you've purchased it. Alrighty, so right after I had finished out paying, I got this screen that says, thanks for your order, Annette, your order number is, and then it says you can download, download the items you ordered. So I'm gonna click on that shows me pretty much a history of everything I've ordered, but here are the most recent ones. And so I'm just gonna grab, um, let's grab that little umbrella drink file and see how when I hover over download files, it turns red. So I'm gonna click on that. Now everything else stays there. Uh, I can come back in and hit my account anytime and download, but I usually download everything right away. But for now, I'm just gonna download this one file so you see uh, it does then go to a next step with a zip file. And then there it went, it's, it's downloading right now. Super easy. And then I can open that zip file. And it went right to my computer. So it shows you the terms of use, license, agreement, uh, an, a JPEG of the actual file, which I like to print these out, keep them in a notebook so I have a good visual when I'm building the pieces. And then there is the actual SVG file. And then this one has a little PDF how to use it. 
Now, a lot of times with Lori Whitlock's 3D um, cuts, she provides a wonderful brief YouTube video showing how to assemble, which is another reason why I love her shop. Okay, so let me go to the next step. Okay, now that I have ownership of that image, the next thing that I'll do is I'll go to Cricut Design Space. Now, that's because I use a Cricut machine. Um, the steps may be a little different if you have a different kind of machine. So I have already gone in here and started a new project and, and I've hit the Upload button here. Now, you use Upload when you're pulling in something new that you don't already own or you don't have a cartridge for. Uh, images is for those things. So uploading is for something new. So now it's going to ask me to find the file. And I keep a little Cricut folder. And I, I already moved that download into this folder when I first got it. All right, so there we go. And there's the SVG file that I told you about. See how it has SVG at the end. So I'm going to click on that one and hit open. Then I get this cute little screen, and you can put some tags in here. I'm going to type in a few things really quick. You don't have to do this. I like to. It helps me a lot later find things. Uh, umbrella, drink, cocktail, alcohol. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to save that. That way, if I forget that the thing is called umbrella drink, at least I can type in a word like umbrella or drink and it will find the image later. All right, so uh, I did that very quickly, but I clicked on the image and then I hit insert image. And as you can see, it's churning and pulling in all these layers. Okay, now this is not a Cricut course. I'm not going to teach you how to mess with all these layers and stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll go in on the iPad and I will show you the mailbox file and how I cut that out and show you the pieces and then we'll put it together. Okay, here's my iPad. Um, this is a learning experience for me too because I did not know you can't put um, QuickTime player on an iPad. So <laughs> I am using my camera here as you can see. So we're going to just do it this way because this, this is a very brief part of the process. So as you can see, these are the pieces that I have brought into Cricut Design Space um, on the desktop computer. And now I can come in here and take a look at them too. So here's that whole mailbox, like all the pieces and the parts. So, I mean, it's that simple now. Now, what you do have to do, obviously, if you know how to use your machine, is you plan out what color papers you're going to use to cut out certain pieces. And a lot of times I change the colors here on screen to help me kind of remember and visually cue me as to uh, which mat to feed in and what paper color to feed in. But I mean, at this point, all you're going to do is hit make it. And then it's going to show you all your different mats, how many you're going to need for each color. And it gives you a little preview of what you're about to cut. You hit continue. It's going to ask you what kind of material you're cutting. And because I'm using cardstock and graphic 45 paper, which is almost cardstock thick, I'm going to say medium cardstock when it gives me that option. Uh, this part sometimes takes a little bit, but there we go, medium card stock. And then it will ask me to go ahead and put in the first mat. I mean, and that's really it. So here's my machine right next to me down here. And it's waiting for that piece of paper. But, you know, I'm not going to go through all that. I actually already did it. And so here are all my pieces. Now, if you remember, I said I print out a copy of the file so I know what I'm kind of working with and some kind of visual cue as to putting it together. So I'll keep that next to me. And yeah, here's all the pieces. So this is Mona Moore paper from Graphic 45, oldie but a goodie. And the red is just cardstock for the base of the actual um, mailbox. 
Okay, so now I'll take you through how easy it is to put it together and give you a little tip about making some little envelopes for this. All right, so I've got all my red pieces and a lot of them have score lines on them and they're actually little tiny slits, which I kind of like because they score very nicely. So I'm gonna go through, I've already gone through and folded on all these score lines. And I did watch Lori's video first to make sure I knew which way to fold. She's got one on YouTube, just like I told you. All right, so all my pieces are ready, and then I'm ready to start adhering papers to those pieces before I assemble, which I think would be a lot easier. And so first I have gone through and inked the edges with a pink ink. This is the Decades Ink by Colorbox for Graphic 45. It's a really pretty pink, and I use my little dauber here to ink the edges. So I did that to all my pieces, and I'll go ahead and put those on now. Okay, so to connect the, this is the side of the top of the box. So the best way I like to start is to, I put some double-sided adhesive tape on the little panels here. I use 3 eighths because the actual little flaps are about a half of an inch, so 3 eighths is perfect. So I, I peeled up the first middle piece and I'm just gonna press that center right on there like so and then I'll go one by one keep things easy so this is actually a lid to the box it doesn't get adhered to the mailbox. It's actually a liftable lid, as you'll see. So when you drop your little Valentines in there or your little love notes, um, you just lift the lid to reach in there and grab them out of there and read them. Okay, super easy. That's one side. So now I'll do the other. All right, and you'll notice, um, hopefully you noticed, when I was putting this together, the flowers, if you have a directional paper, uh, you do need to realize that this is the bottom of your mailbox. So now we're going to peel and stick these together. Obviously, take your time so that it's a little better squared up than that. And then for this side, I'll just bring those two together. And I could always trim that off, and I might do that. Uh, but for now, it's okay. And so now I'm going to close this down and adhere that last square to square all that up. 
All right, one thing that you will want to know is that you do not want to smear a bunch of glue on the back of this thing because you got this big hole here. So I have just put ample amounts of the double-sided adhesive on the four flaps instead of putting it on here. Reach down in there and press it really good. And then your top goes on. There. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, so there's a number of things we can do to dress up the box a little bit further. I went to the sticker sheet and I put uh, some border stickers in the front and the back. I didn't have enough to go all the way around all four sides, so instead I cut from some paper in the pack that sort of resembles the stickers a little bit. So I'm going to add those on the sides. I just used some scallop scissors to cut that edge to match the sticker. Okay, and then I put some stickers on the sides of the lid here. I put photo corner stickers on top. I uh, found some old pretty lace to put around this area. And so there's a couple of other things you can do. This is a sticker as well. And I mounted it on black cardstock. I cut it out, popped it up with some foam tape and put it on red and cut that out. And so I'm thinking that will go right about there. So I'm gonna pop that up with some foam tape. But before I do that, what I did, this is something that, you know, if you don't wanna pull out flowers and all kinds of stuff, you can go to your paper collection and look for a similar image that you already have or the same image and cut it out again and kind of pop it up like that. Just a little added dimension. So I put a little foam tape on there and then I will layer this on there. Now let me turn it around so I can see. You have to be a little bit careful because the box wants to give, so you can stick your hand in there, help yourself out. Okay, and then I've got this little sticker, Forever and Always, which probably should have gone in there first, so I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. Okay. And then... I want to add something to the front again of this top. Anytime I'm doing anything on the lid, I do want to put it back on the box. Gives it a little more stability. And so I want to put this Be Mine on there. And these are stickers from the sticker sheet, some alphabets, and I measured the top to bottom, and then I cut a strip of black cardstock just a little bit narrower, and I'm going to do a little V-notch off the ends here like a ribbon. Pop a little foam tape on there. I like my foam tape. Especially like the black stuff. A little too long. Trim that off. Okay. And this will pop right on here. Like so. Okay, then I got to thinking, all right, we could go even further with this and we could start adding metal. So I think that I'm going to, this is um, this is the doorknob to the door plates and knobs from Graphic 45. I just took the knob, but then I took a Graphic 45 keyhole. I like this one because it's sort of symmetrical on both ends. So I think I'm gonna pop that on there with some metal glue. 
And then I thought, well, wow, that's really starting to dress it up. Maybe this thing needs some claw feet. Because you know that's my favorite thing ever. So I think I'm going to stick those on the bottom of there. So let me go do that off camera and I'll show you that as soon as it dries. All right, there it is, all fancy with the feet and the metal on top. Ready to go, ready for some Valentines. And so speaking of that, um, easy enough. You can go to your Mona Moore paper collection or whatever paper you're using. But the Mona Moore has a sheet in there. Um, My Beloved, I think it's called. And it has uh, this blank side here on these little cut-aparts. All these cut-aparts on the page are great. Uh, so you could write on the back. And, you know, these fit right into the mailbox. And you could do that. But why not go one step further and make yourself some cute little envelopes with your scraps and your envelope punch board. <laughs> I recently discovered there is a mini envelope punch board, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, of course, I had so much fun making that one. I had to make this one. This is a little mini size one. It's probably about, mm, maybe a little less than, well, half the size, I'd say. So this is the size, if you just took Lori Whitlock's file and you brought it in and you didn't change anything, this is the size. It's a pretty big size. And so I took the whole file down, you know, about 50%. And this one uses Baby to Bride collection. I added some buttons and stamping and lace and all kinds of goodies on there and of course made little envelopes for this one too a whole bunch of envelopes haven't made the little valentine's yet i figure in this one i'll just do a little blank card maybe a little pink card okay so there they are don't be afraid to use your cricut it's easy or don't be afraid to use your your cutting file and your computer don't be intimidated. It is not difficult. I taught myself, and if I didn't know it, then I called a friend, Jackie Tibbetts, or I looked it up online or I watched a video. So don't be afraid. Enjoy it. Use your tools. Don't give up. All right. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Leave me some comments, subscribe, some likes, whatever. I really appreciate you stopping by, taking a peek. I hope you try this project. It's pretty fun. All right. Bye. Bye.